Good morning, Grade Sixers, and welcome to Worksheet Cloud, Grade Six Natural Sciences. If you have a question during the lesson, send an email with your question to Grade Six at WorksheetCloud.com. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Mrs. Hall, and I look forward to teaching you this lesson today on the moon. What are we going to learn today, Grade Sixers? Why can we see the moon in the sky at night? Why does the moon look different at certain times? And can the moon ever be seen in the day? Some exciting news, we are also going to take a mission to the moon today. And I'm going to teach you all about what it would be like if and when one day we do get to live on the moon. So let's start off with what is the moon? So Earth's moon is not a planet, but it is a satellite which orbits Earth. It is around a quarter of the size of Earth with a diameter of 3.476 kilometers. A satellite is a body in space that orbits a planet. Scientists aren't exactly sure how the moon was formed, although the main theory is that around 4.5 billion years ago, a body the size of Mars crashed into Earth. The debris from the crash is believed to have formed the moon. The moon has a thick outer layer of hard rock and is covered in regolith, regolith, which is called moon soil. The movement of the moon. Let's take a look at the orbits. So the moon orbits Earth once every 27.3 days. The moon orbits Earth in an oval shaped path called an ellipse. Because of this shape, the moon is sometimes nearer and sometimes further away from Earth. The range of distance is from 364,397 kilometers to 406,731 kilometers. Just like the Earth, the moon rotates on its axis. This rotation is anti-clockwise, just like the Earth's. It takes 28 days for the moon to rotate just once. Because the moon spins and orbits at the same rate of time, it appears to be still from Earth. Scientists call this synchronous rotation. The word synchronize means that things happen at the same time. Let's take a look at the far side of the moon. So the side of the moon we can see is called the near side. The other side of the moon, the side we can't see, is called the far side, although people often refer to it as the dark side of the moon. This is not accurate, as there is no side of the moon which is constantly in darkness. In 1959, the Russian spacecraft Luna 3 took the first photographs of the far side of the moon, until that time, no one knew what it actually even looked like. The far side of the moon is very different to the near side. It is covered in craters from meteors that have crashed into it. The shape of the moon. At various times in a month, the moon looks different. This is because as the moon rotates around the Earth, the sun lights up different parts of it. So we have the sunlight over there. Let's just move me. Okay. And from that, we have waxing and waning. The moon can be described as either waxing or waning. And this refers to the amount of moon we can actually see on sequential days. When we are gradually seeing more of the moon over a number of days, this is called waxing, as you can see in the diagram there. 
when we are gradually seeing less of the moon over a number of days. This is called waning. We also speak about the crescent and the gibbous of the moon. A crescent moon is when we can only see a crescent shaped area of the moon. There we have a waning, a waning crescent moon. Here we have a waxing crescent moon. A gibbous moon is when a crescent shaped area of the moon cannot be seen. And there we have a waning gibbous moon. And here we have a waxing gibbous moon. Let's take a look at the phases of the moon. The moon can also be described as a new moon. That means none of it is visible from the earth and we have half a moon and a full moon. So here we can take a look at the diagram as shown with the sunlight coming in. Okay, and there we have our waxing half moon, our new moon, our, wa our waning half moon, and our full moon. Okay, if you would like to pause me here and take a lot more detail in, you are welcome to do so. Let's see how much you can remember. Can you guess the missing words? The moon does what? The earth once every 27,3 what? The moon orbits the Earth once every 27,3 days. When we gradually see more of the moon, it is called waxing. When we gradually see less of the moon, it is called waning. Well done, grade sixes. What is a lunar eclipse? A lunar eclipse, grade sixes, is when the moon moves into the Earth's shadow. This shadow darkens the moon, okay? And those are the names, the umbra and the penumbra. And they happen about every two to three per year, and they last up to about four hours. And they are called lunar eclipses. They are actually so beautiful to watch. What is a solar eclipse? A solar eclipse moves is when the moon moves between earth and the sun the moon casts a shadow on part of the earth and a total eclipse is very very rare and only once every 360 years can you see one from a specific location let's take a mission to the moon so what is it like on the moon? Well, let's take a look at the length of day, the atmosphere, the temperature, the water, the radiation, as well as the gravity and landscape of the moon. So, as you know, there are very long days and very long nights. And why is this? It is because the moon spins on its axis, in other words, it rotates once every 28 days. Earth rotates once every 24 hours. The moon's rotation means its day is almost two weeks long and then it's dark for two weeks. There is nothing to breathe on the moon. So the moon does not have an atmosphere. And atmospheres are important because they protect us from harmful solar radiation and help to keep the temperatures consistent. It's really hot and really cold on the moon as well. The moon's temperature range is from about 107 degrees Celsius in the sunlight to minus 153 degrees in the shade or darkness. That's about 224 degrees Fahrenheit to minus 243 degrees Fahrenheit below freezing. The temperature changes so much because there is no atmosphere to moderate it. Extreme changes are very bad for the equipment on the moon. What about the water? So there's no liquid water on the moon. There may be frozen water or ice in deep craters near the poles. 
Solar radiation levels on the moon's surface are dangerously high because there is no atmosphere to block the incoming radiation. The moon is smaller than Earth, but because it has mass, it does have gravity. The moon's gravity is one sixth of the Earth's gravity. Because there is less pull on you, you will weigh less and you will be able to jump much higher on the moon. It is very dusty on the moon, grade sixes. The moon's rocks have been pulverized into a fine powder by continuous asteroid impacts. This regolith layer can be 45 feet thick. Here we have our lunar landscape. So, we have bright, heavily cratered lunar highlands, okay, over there, and they are mostly made from plagioclasy rocks that are about four and a half billion years old. We also have dark, smooth lunar lowlands, which are called Maria, pronounced Maria, made of three to billion four year old basalt, the same rock type as Earth's ocean floor and the Hawaii volcanoes. The lunar regolith covers much of the surface. Okay, so we have the lunar highlands and we have the lunar lowlands. So here we can see the craters quite clearly over here. And these craters are about 2,500 kilometers, in other words, 1,553 miles across. They are mostly formed by meteorite impact on the moon. Some form by volcanic action inside the moon. Here we have some marias, okay, a close up of them. They are originally thought to be seas by the early astronomers the darkest parts of the lunar landscape. They are filled by lava after a crash of huge meteorites on lunar surface about three to four billion years ago, and they are mostly basalt rock. What would you need to live on the moon, grade sixes? You would need shelter, you would need power, you would need food, water, earth communications, as well as tools or equipment, um, as well as ways to be able to move around and live on the moon. So let's look at an outpost. A lunar outpost is needed, okay, for long stays to maintain an atmosphere and protect us from temperature extremes. We would need spacesuits to protect us outside the base. It will be built with materials transported from Earth, which could be very costly, but we can use lunar resources like moon, uh, from the moon to help, like titanium and regolith, for lunar bricks. A natural shelter can be found in the lava tubes in ancient volcanic areas. Okay, and that is how we would make our shelter on the moon. What about power? Fuel is expensive to transport from Earth, so solar power can be used to run an outpost. Solar power will have to be stored in costly batteries for long periods of darkness unless the base is in a permanently sunny region. Food. Big question, especially for us. We all love good food. Food will be transported from Earth. Eventually, hydroponic gardens will be created to provide food for our outpost on the moon. What about water? Liquid water does not exist on the moon's surface. Water ice may exist in deep, permanently shadowed craters at the poles. All humans, as you know, need water to drink. Water also can be broken into hydrogen and oxygen, H2O, two hydrogen molecules, one oxygen molecule, and used as a fuel, or to create an atmosphere at the enclosed base. How about calling home? 
Earth is far away, about 240,000 miles away. We will need to communicate about outpost operations and the health of the astronauts, and we will want to stay in touch with our Earth friends too. The outpost will have to be in constant view of Earth to maintain communications. If the outpost is not in view, it can be very costly. We would have to have costly satellite systems will have to be put in place. The tools and equipment we will need to transport to the lunar outpost to build the base as well as to conduct scientific experiments while there. Roving the surface, we will need ways to move around the surface as we build the outpost, search for resources, and conduct scientific experiments. The topography, a lunar outpost, will have to be built in a safe, relatively flat location that is easy to reach on foot or by a moon buggy. Okay, other considerations to take into account. What science can we do? Depending on where we go, we can learn different things about how the moon formed and has changed. We can set up telescopes to monitor Earth or to look deep into space. So, grade sixes, isn't the moon an absolutely amazing spectacle? Watching it from your windows at night, nothing more beautiful. Okay, take a look at that beautiful moon. I want to say thank you for watching Grade Sixes. Um, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. For those of you who are really interested in the moon, there is a website called, called MarsOne.com. If you go to that website, there is a planned mission for life on the moon. And they are trying to get people to actually live on the moon and set up an actual place called home on the moon. That is a brilliant website where all your questions can be answered. And for those of you that are absolutely fascinated and would love to be an astronaut one day, maybe you will one day get to live on the moon. Thank you for watching Grade Sixes. I hope you enjoyed. See you soon. Take care.